There is a tragic phenomenon which dominates the social realm. While arrogant and disrespectful people often receive large amounts of respect and prestige from the rest of us, kind and loving people are often stepped on, treated poorly and given no respect themselves. And the moment we become aware of this, we quickly realize how insane this is and how it completely screws up our social lives. Now it turns out that the solution to this problem might be found in the teachings of Bruce Lee. Now if you know anything about the man, chances are you've probably seen this clip. Or this. And of course, you've probably heard him say this. Be water, my friend. And okay, be like water, fair enough. We have to be strong, yet willing to adapt. We never get tired of that one. But then again, it's pretty abstract. So by now you're probably wondering why on earth any quote by Bruce Lee can help you improve your own life in any concrete manner. And I get that. However, in this video, I will share with you another quote by Bruce Lee, a lesson, a piece of advice, often forgotten or neglected, which if implemented, holds the power to save your social life. And this lesson that I'm about to share is so fundamental and important that I had to give it a name. I call it the social law of escalation. Bruce Lee, nothing short of a superhuman entity, supreme and legendary martial artist, ambitious and successful film director, and by some, also regarded as a great philosopher. And there is no doubt that his words and ideas have influenced and continue to influence an extremely large number of people. Despite the fact that a lot of Bruce Lee's thoughts and ideas revolved around the world of martial arts, Lee himself often emphasized how insights derived from fighting could easily be projected onto any other aspect of life. Because, uh as an actor, as a martial artist, as a human being, all these I have learned from martial arts. So without any more stalling, the quote that I'm referring to is this. A man strikes you, make him bleed. He makes you bleed, you break his bones. He breaks your bones, kill him. Being hit is inevitable, strike back twice as hard. Okay, isn't this just about martial arts and the world of fighting in general? Well, actually not. As I said before, a lot of the things that we learn from martial arts can be projected onto other aspects of our lives. And in this case, understanding what Lee means can actually provide a lot of value to our social lives. Take a look at your social surroundings. You are obviously going to be surrounded by different personality types in your immediate family, among friends, at your workplace, etc. And you act differently towards some people than towards others. People. And there is a specific phenomenon that I want you to focus on. Something that you have most likely observed and probably also experienced, although you might not have been conscious of it. Namely, as I said in the beginning of this video, that there is a tendency for us people to respect other individuals who look down on us or treat us poorly. And at the same time, there is a tendency for us to step on the people who treat us kindly and with respect. Sweetie, sweetie, that's kind of dangerous. You want to move it up onto the sidewalk away from the traffic? My dad says you're a joke and I don't have to listen to you. Let me try to give you an example from my own life. Me, myself, I go to university, I study psychology. Before that, I studied economics and political studies. So I've spent a lot of time in classrooms and auditoriums. Now, at any school or university, there are two types of teachers or professors. Number one is the type that doesn't give a shit about the students. They have no problems calling students out in public. And in some cases, if students ask questions, the teacher might even ridicule the given student if the teacher regards the question as being stupid. Now, you might expect students to revolt against such a teacher to protest against such tyrannical behavior by staying away from lectures or whatever. But contrary to what our anti-authoritarian minds might expect, this often doesn't happen. Instead, these professors are often shown a tremendous amount of respect and they often regard it as competent, cool, prestigious individuals. And while we might secretly hate these people for treating us badly, while we might loathe them for what they represent in our lives, these people never get to know that because most people never dare to say or do anything. And this goes for many scenarios, for many different roles in society. Because we as human beings are wired to react to how other people regard themselves. The thing is, we don't have the time or the resources to individually assess every single person in our social surroundings. Therefore, if I walk around acting in an overly confident manner, other people who have no real way of knowing whether I am actually competent will intuitively interpret the way I act as if I am extremely competent. If you're not a genius, don't bother. 
The same way, if I am extremely arrogant, if I call people out in public, if I humiliate them, people have a tendency to interpret this as if I know exactly what I'm doing, and this naturally intimidates people. Of course, I might also be very competent indeed, but this doesn't change the fact that I act like a prick. And then there is the other type of professor or teacher, the one who is more nice and easygoing, who listens and might even negotiate a bit with the students. If a student, say, needs another day to hand in an assignment, this type of teacher would probably be open to that. Also, this teacher puts an effort into making the classroom comfortable for the students. He or she seeks to create a learning environment where the students don't get put on the spot and where they don't feel intimidated. So what happens? These teachers often get less respect. Students, at least in university, stay out of these classes, talk back to the teacher, show up late for classes, disturb during lectures. They don't read, they don't hand in assignments on time, and they often take advantage of the teacher or professor's willingness to negotiate. And again, there are many scenarios in our lives, many roles in society where this applies. Lies. Briefly put, we have a sick tendency to respect the people who don't respect us, and at the same time we tend to neglect or step on the people who respect and love us. Because the thing is, the people who treat us kindly don't intimidate us. We take them for granted, we're not afraid to lose them, and we intuitively interpret their behavior as if they need us more than we need them. While the opposite is the case with the people who treat us like crap. We interpret their behavior as if these people don't need us at all, as if these people have completely figured out their lives. And the thing is, we want to figure out our lives too. So we end up looking up to these people, we end up giving them respect. In short, we live under the illusion that if someone talks down to you, it must necessarily mean that they are also higher up than you. In other words, we intuitively think that if other people treat us disrespectfully, that it's completely legitimate for them to do so. How many times have you experienced that someone said something or did something disrespectful to you and you didn't do anything? Maybe because you were surprised in the moment or because you were afraid, maybe. But sometimes it's simply because we become sheep when we meet someone who acts like a wolf. At the same time, however, we seem to have very little patience and often lash out much more quickly when in a conflict with our spouse, children, or parents. One explanation for this is that when you get to know someone intimately, one thing that will naturally happen is that you become less and less intimidated by the person and you also start taking the person for granted as you gradually become more and more convinced that the person is not just gonna leave you. For instance, your arrogant boss might give you a raise tomorrow or he might fire you tomorrow. But your husband or wife? Nah, that's gonna stay pretty much the same. If you have a fight with your boss, now that can create some serious problems or cost you your promotion. But a fight with your spouse? Apart from a night or two on the couch, that's gonna be forgotten in a couple of days and makes no real difference. Now, this way of thinking happens on a subconscious level and it's often not something that we think about. But as I said in the beginning of this video, the moment you become aware of this, you quickly realize how messed up this is and how it completely screws up your social life. Which takes us back to Bruce Lee's quote and what I refer to as the social law of escalation. Now in the quote he says that being hit is inevitable. Project this onto your social life and we can easily interpret this as do not base your well-being or happiness on avoiding social conflicts. Do not fool yourself and believe that you will never be hurt, that no one in your social surroundings will ever try to strike you down. The thing is, you will be hurt. People will argue with you, they will humiliate you, they will let you down, betray you, speak ill of you behind your back, abandon you. Being hit is is inevitable. But at the same time, there are people in our surroundings who are committed to our happiness, who are devoted to us, who want to share their lives with us, who are honest with us, will never let us down, will protect us from harm and support us even when we fail. And implementing the social law of escalation means that whatever our surroundings give us, we strike back twice as hard. We escalate. And this goes for all scenarios. If someone treats you poorly or without respect, an arrogant boss, a teacher who ridicules you for asking a question, a friend who speaks ill of you behind your back, treat them twice as bad. You might remember that Machiavelli famously said, it is better to be feared than loved if we cannot have both. But remember, that is only half the story. On the other hand, if someone treats you with kindness, love and respect, give them twice or 10 times as much kindness, love and respect in return. If your wife or husband is devoted to you, be 10 times as devoted to that person. Try to live your life by the social law of escalation. So let's talk about how this actually works in real life. As Bruce Lee said, if someone makes you bleed, break his arm. In in most cases, this is to be understood metaphorically though. There are of course cases in which you are literally defending yourself against somebody who's assaulting you. In those cases, of course, the principle applies in a literal sense. Somebody makes you bleed, break his arm, somebody breaks your arm, kill him. But the thing is, in most scenarios, it's not that easy. Most negative interactions we have with people are not violent and therefore violence from our part is by no means justified. So what can we do instead? Now try to ask yourself, what is the most devastating thing you can do to another person socially? To isolate them. 
Remember that the social realm is like a marketplace. If, let's say, a cafe owner treats you poorly or offers you bad service in general, what do you do? You stop going to that cafe. And if another cafe owner offers you good service and respectful treatment, you repay him by returning to his cafe regularly. And if everyone does this, theoretically, over time, cafe owners offering poor service go bankrupt, while cafes offering good service survive and thrive, increasing the general level of service in society. Now, apply this to the social realm in general. Every time some Somebody treats you with disrespect, cut all ties to that person instantly. Remove the social and emotional noise from your life. What you want to do is ignore bad people. What you want to do is isolate them socially. Just as with a cafe owner, you want to make sure that people who tyrannize or humiliate other people go socially bankrupt. Because the only reason why people in society get away with treating the rest of us like crap is because we let them. Because we don't punish them or deter them from doing so. At the same time, one of the many reasons why we time after time end up up hurting the people who are closest to us is because we take our frustrations out on people by whom we are not intimidated. People whom we take for granted. Turn that behavior upside down and you will see even your closest and most positive relationships become even better. Obviously, this needs to make sense in the bigger picture. If your spouse, as a general rule, treats you with respect and love and then one day lashes out in a disrespectful manner, your go-to solution is of course not to escalate but to communicate. But the only reason why this is the case is because the overall relationship is positive, kind, and full of respect. If the opposite was the case and you're dealing with a person who regularly treats you poorly, the right thing to do is to strike back twice as hard. That will either force the person to change his or her behavior or it will naturally force the person out of your life. Scenarios both of which would represent an improvement of your social life. If you start implementing the social law of escalation as a fundamental component in how you deal with social interactions, if every time you encountered an individual who treated you poorly, you you treated that individual twice as poorly, if you chose to repay the arrogant teacher by not showing up to classes, if you chose to repay the disrespectful people by fighting back or by shutting them out of your life, and if you at the same time decided to all day and every day repay those who love you and respect you by giving them twice or as I said even 10 times more love and respect in return, then as an individual it would significantly improve your social life. If everyone did it, it would significantly improve society. Remember, if someone hits you, make him bleed. He makes you bleed, break his bones. If someone breaks your bones, kill him. Being hit is inevitable. Strike back twice as hard. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, remember to subscribe to my channel. Don't hesitate in joining the conversation. Leave a comment after you watch this video. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.